the recipient is without a doubt a legal leader. This artist is able to look at adversity and transform it into achievable goals. The lead motivator is a sergeant who consistently demonstrated the can-do attitude, positive character, and confidence throughout the course. The recipient of the lead motivator award for the class is Staff Sergeant Richard Gallishaw, Houston, Texas. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, world? It has been a minute. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's been a long time, almost, what, a year since I last posted on my videos. Um, a lot has transpired, okay? A lot. I am in the process of PCSing, so that's why it looks dead empty behind me. Um, this is my last week before I go on my next journey. I just wanted to share a video with you all, okay? One of the most recent things that I have completed was SLC, Senior Leader Course for 92 Alpha. And um, one of the things, I, I learned a few things and I, I noticed a, um, a couple of similar patterns. This is my third time going to a, a leadership school. And at this point, I've just noticed a continuing trend in like similar patterns and behaviors from individuals and I just wanted to share with you all my experience in SLC. All right. Um, this is not rehearsed. I'm just, you know. So where do I start? I think one of the patterns that I noticed the most is that when people are going to these schools, a lot of people have this hive mindset. They have this hive mindset where they feel like they have to be with cliques and they have to be with groups, okay? Um, and in my experience and from my from what I've seen and, and how I've gotten to this point is that isn't the way to go. Having that hive mindset and always clicking up and being in these, like being in groups where you can't even see you without seeing six, seven, eight other people, it's hard for you to distinguish yourself amongst your peers. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, I don't care about getting no far exceeded standards. I don't care about the commandant's list. I don't care about distinguished honor grad. I'm only here to get a 1059. And what I am here to tell you is that is bull. Straight up cap. It's a lie. OK. And if it is true and these individuals are at these schools and they're not trying to um trying to, to, to be the best that they can be and be rated as high as they possibly could be. That's two things. Number one, you don't want to be with that type of person. You don't want those type of people in your circle in the first place. And number two, if you have that thought process and they have that thought process, y'all are not going to make it far in the military. Now, some people don't care about the military and that's completely fine. If you are going career and this is something that you feel like you want to do and you want to do your 20 and you want to, uh, achieve the most that you can possibly achieve and get the highest rank that you can possibly get. When you go to these schools and we're getting rated and you're getting your NCO yards and things of that nature, you want to you want to get rated as high as you possibly can. All right. So that high mindset of going to these schools and instantly trying to click up and feeling like you can't be an individual. That's it's not cool. And it doesn't it, it, it doesn't work. Also, for some reason, people are afraid to be disliked. And that is a true problem, especially for senior leaders, leaders in general. If you're put in a position to lead, you cannot be afraid to be disliked. You can't because it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter, you know, how you strategize or what you feel like is best, everybody's not going to agree with your thought process and your viewpoints. So if you were so concerned about everybody liking you, that is going to affect your leadership. It's even going to affect you as a person because there are things that you're going to want to censor. There are things that you're going to shut down about yourself because you're afraid of what people are going to or how people are going to view you. 
All right. I am not afraid to be disliked. I'm not. In my last video, when I was in ALC and I told y'all um, pretty much my experience, um, I was a loner for the most part because I was instantly put into a leadership position. And with me being put into that position, I knew that I couldn't have relationships with my peers because naturally people are going to take advantage of your friendship when you have to be a leader. All right. And as a leader, you have got to be able to distinguish um, being a leader and being someone's friend. You cannot be someone's friend when you are a leader. All right. You can't. You can't. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail with SLC. I will say that um, SLC is easier, in my opinion, than ALC. ALC was longer. We took tests almost every Friday. Granted, it was open notebook. However, it was it, it wasn't easy. I, I can't describe it. We did PT every single day. Um, it was it was way more strenuous and way more stressful. Whereas SLC was a little bit more chill. We didn't take halfway as many tests, and, and school was only a month long. All right. So my SLC, as usual, I'm always in the school where we're the first to do whatever. All right. When I was in ALC, we were the first class to have the new 1059, where you would literally be rated like an NCOER. This time, we are we were the first class because we were the first official class of the fiscal year of 2023. The first class in October, the very first class that um, was officially going to have to take and pass the ACFT. Um, the SGL said that we were in the pilot program and we were what they were going to look at to determine how they were going to go forth with SLC from here on out. So the first uh, week we did everything online where we were at. There are pros and cons to that, but I'm not going to get into that. And then after that, then we went to Fort Lee, where is, which, which is where I went from SLC and we started and it was a month long. All right. Um. I'm not going to like I said, I'm not going to go into the details. I just want to talk about some common things and some co common patterns that I saw. All right. So. The two most pivotal moments in SLC was day one and the second day before graduation. OK, what do I mean by that? So day one, we had to uh, officially get up in front of the class and talk about ourselves and what our, you know, what we intend, what, what are we looking for in SLC? And I would say about 90% of the class was like, I don't, um, I'm just here to network and to link up and network with other people. And, um, I don't, the commandant's list, distinguished undergrad, all that stuff like that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm just here to get my 1059 and network. All right. That's what 90% of the class said. Now, Fast forward, okay? It's the, the day before graduation, all right? Overall, as a class, we're having to vote for uh, most, um, the highly motivated and all these other, whatever, these different titles, and you could vote. So uh, one of the students in our class, he, he got voted for um, highly, the most motivated. All right. So after it was done, um, my SGL, our SGL instructor said, all right, um, there's an issue with the vote that y'all did. This particular individual is disqualified because he was counseled. All right. Um, during the course term. So he is disqualified. However, if y'all vote and decide to allow him to get this title, then. I am going to make it fair for everybody. So if I do it for him, then that means that everybody who has gotten counsel throughout the entire course is now going to be eligible for Commandant's List and Distinguished Honor Grad. Now, keep in mind, there are some people who were close to getting in these uh, positions, but because they got counsel, disqualified. So I'm going to allow you all to vote. And if y'all vote to allow that individual to get the most um, highly motivated, then I will Throw away everybody's counselings who got counsel and every it's fair game for everybody to be ranked. Now, for those of you who do not know what I'm talking about, when you go to these NCO schools, okay, you have got to you cannot get counsel. You can't get any negative counselings. So if you come somewhere, if you come somewhere late, if you come to a formation late, or your phone goes off in class, or you were talking back to an SGL or you got a DUI, you getting chatted out. But I'm just saying, if you had any type of discrepancies, if you failed the test, 
if you fail the PT test or anything of that nature, it disqualifies you from being able to get in on the commandant's list, which in like civilian terms is like honor roll, if that makes sense. So when you go to these schools, you're you want to aim to be rated high. You want to be within the top 20 percent of your class. OK, because when you're looking at promotion and you're and you're dropping packets for officer and warrant and all these things of that nature, they're going to be looking at your your NCOERs. They're going to be looking at your 1059s. All right. And this is pretty much showing what your potential is. You know, that's what you want to shoot for. Now, unfortunately, everybody can't get those positions. And if you don't get that position or the people who don't get it, it doesn't mean that they're not great leaders and there's nothing wrong. At the end of the day, the only thing, the most important thing is the 1059. But for your own personal goals, you want to be the best that you can be and you want to shoot and try to get in um, rated high in those positions. If it doesn't happen, it's fine as long as you pass. But if you want, if you, you want to go for the best that you possibly can, if that makes sense. So anyway, back to this, what I'm telling you. So people in the class was like, well, get, let them get it. Let them get it. People who got counseled, let them get it. Let them get it. And uh, the instructor was like, all right, I'm going to let y'all vote. And y'all are going to come back after lunch. So you don't have to say it out loud. You're going to write it on a card and you're going to let me know yes or no. If you are going to allow, if you want everybody to have a fair chance again. So something in my spirit just would not settle. And I could not, I couldn't accept this. I couldn't accept it because it wasn't fair and it wasn't right. All right. Um, I am big on following the regulations and it just in my spirit, in my soul, you're, you're taking away the effort that everybody else put in to do what they needed to do to to to, to possibly have a um, chance to to get what they earned. And the people who messed up now are going to get a second chance when literally on day one, the policy stated that. In order for you to be um, in the criteria to receive commandant's list or distinguished honor grad or any of these particular type of um, awards, you had to meet these certain cr um, criteria. You couldn't get counseling. So everybody got the same exact thing, but you're going to give everybody the opportunity. So nobody said anything. So my spirit is hurting. So I get up. I, I rose my hand. I said, I'm sorry. I said, Sergeant First Class, I apologize. I said, um, but I can't allow this to happen. I said from day one, when we first came into class, you literally went over every last policy that we needed to know. You told us what was required for us to be able to, um, to, to meet the eligibility requirements to be able to earn commandant's list or distinguished honor grad in all of the other different awards. And if you allow this to happen and you allow this class to vote, to throw all that away, what you're telling all of us is that when we go back to our units, that it doesn't matter what regulations come out. It doesn't matter what policies are put in place. If we feel like we don't want to follow it, we don't have to. And this is what we're going to be um, pretty much sharing with our soldiers. And I was like, I can't do it. So I took the little note card that he gave and I ripped it up. So when I did that, um, I sat down and um, somebody in the class was like, well, you know, um, this uh, if we all collectively come together, this is how we make change. And I was like, I agree with that. But until that change, until the change is put into black and white, we have to abide by the rules and the regulations. And this is the policy for this um, for this course. So the instructor says, you know what? Hey, y'all, he's right. He's like, I'm not changing anything. He said, honestly, it was a test. I just wanted to see what y'all was going to do. And he was like, I remember I told y'all on day one, which he did. He said, day one, all of y'all are saying y'all only here for a 1059. But when that when it's crunch time and it's almost time to graduate, that's when people show their true colors. And that overall, as a class, they showed their true colors. Nobody stepped up and was like, um, that's wrong or anything. Everybody was sitting there like they was with it. Or if they weren't with it, they didn't verbally speak up for themselves. Once again, going to what I was saying about being afraid to be disliked. People didn't want to be disliked, and they were people probably were afraid that if I stood up and I said that this isn't right, then the, the class as a whole is not going to like me anymore. So I was the only one that stood up, and he was like, "You're right." He was like, "I was." He was like, "Gal, so why you had to spoil it?" He was like, "I was going to wait till after lunch, but yeah, I'm not changing nothing." He was like, "All of y'all got y'all rankings, and that's what it is." He was like, "I just wanted to prove a point that everybody who, who's here saying that they're only here for a 1059, they're not really here for a 1059." Everybody's ulterior motive is to 
get the best that they can possibly get. So when you go to these NCO schools, if you haven't already, don't listen. I don't care what the class says. All right. You need to understand that everybody is going to want to be the best that they can be. And when that time and they want they're going to want to be rated high. And when that time comes, people are going to show their true colors. So. When I go to these schools, I try to look at it from the um, instructor's point of view. If I'm if I'm a SGL and I have a class of people and I can only pick a certain amount. Um, so I got to see who has the most potential to be or who I feel like is in that top 20 percent. All right. I'm going to look at individuals. I don't want to see people who are clicked up. I don't want to see where if I see you, you always got the same four or five, six people with you. I want to see people who are authentic, who stand for their beliefs. Um, that doesn't mean you have when you go to these schools, you have to be a loner. There's nothing wrong with having friends and so forth. But you got to draw a line and you, you have to be able to separate yourself from your peers. And it's hard and difficult to do that when you are always in a clique, in a circle of people. Especially when it comes to an SGL who only has a short amount of time to be able to properly evaluate all of y'all. And in my honest opinion, I think that um, in SLC, we only had one SGL. And, and, and I thought that he was very fair and he was cool. He was very organized. No issues with him. The only issue that I have is I feel like um, he couldn't. It would have been easier if there was at least another SGL. All right. We had about 30 people in our class and it was just him. So. Um, I feel like he, we should at least have one other SGL that may be able to catch some things that he couldn't. So with him by himself, there may have been a lot of things that he may have missed or not been able to properly evaluate. And I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. So. This time in SLC. Um, now, in ALC, I had earned distinguished undergrad. So coming into SLC this time, um, I didn't feel as nervous and stressed as I did prior because I had already achieved that. And um, it kind of felt like a relief because, you know, you only get to go to these NCO schools what, five times, like five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you only get to go to five NCO um, schools for your rank. So I, I've, I've been to three so far and I've gotten two common honors lists and one distinguished undergrad. So. I I'm, I'm I'm satisfied. That doesn't mean I'm going to digress, but I just mean like um, I didn't feel like I didn't have that pressure. I also had a, a booster, a higher boost of confidence coming in because I knew what I was capable of. So um, I wasn't as stressed, um, but I was like last time um, I didn't really make any establish any relationships or friends outside of the, the small little tiny little group of people. Um, that I had in um, ALC. So SLC, I truly wanted to network with other individuals and, you know, establish relationships that um, that could benefit me and the other individuals in the long run as we're going forward for our career. But just like ALC, SLC, same thing didn't happen. Um, when I think what happened was one thing that I'm constantly as I'm getting older and just uh, wiser, you just start to learn a little bit more about yourself. And then eventually you start to learn how others view you. OK, after a while, after interacting with other individuals and so forth, you start to be able to pick up vibes and energy that other people are giving off to you. OK, so you can start to read people. And I think my personality um, is like pretty much cut and dry. I'm very. Uh, outspoken. I'm very outspoken. Like I said, I'm not afraid to be disliked. I'm not afraid to speak my mind. I'm I'm always respectful, especially when in in a classroom environment in the military period. I am a very respectful and professional person. All right. So I'm not disrespectful or anything of that nature. But um, a lot of people may see my personality as arrogant or cocky, and they I might come off as flamboyant or something of that nature. And when you're in that type of school environment where you are competing with other people, there are people who they may feel like you are a threat. So they. I felt like that type of energy with with certain people in the class, and there was one particular person who I felt that from the most. And I never was disrespectful to anybody. 
there was one individual who I like the, the energy. Like I tried to reach out and try to be a little bit more sociable and friendly compared to ALC. And there's one individual, I'm not going to say anybody's name, you know, uh, I just felt like, dang, like this dude really doesn't like me. <laughs> and it's funny because when I sat down um, right before we was about to graduate and he was giving us our final you know, counseling and letting us all know where we stood, come to find out um, I beat him to get the spot that I got. And, and I got the commandant's list. So I made the commandant's list. I was ranked number four out of 28, 30, something like that. I, I can't, I don't even remember the, the number in my class, but I was ranked number four. And this particular individual who just had this type of interior animosity that I felt, I ended up beating him out. So it was like bittersweet. But um, I don't think that I'm better than anybody at all. Um, I think that I, I'm a human being. You know, I think that we're all equal. The only thing that separates all of us is our own personal viewpoints of how we view the world in, in, in life and how we view day-to-day uh, -day activities and so forth. And the choices that we, the individual choices that we make with ourselves, that's the only thing that separates all of us. I do not think that I am better than anyone. I am confident in my abilities. Now, I'm not one of those people who think I can do anything, but I, I believe that um, in my heart of hearts, that whatever it is that I'm, I'm trying to get, whatever it is I'm trying to achieve, I have the capability to be able to do it. And I have the drive and the passion to keep going until I achieve, achieve it. And then I'm going to go even fur further than that from there. So um, I'm from New York as well. And, and that coming from that environment, like you can't you can't be quiet. You can't be shy. You can't be you can't have your head down to things of that nature. You 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 have got to be. You got to be able to announce yourself like you got to be able to have your voice, because if you don't, people are going to take advantage of you. So when you put me in, in an environment where we're in a classroom and we're in this environment where people are competing and then on the outside looking in, you see how I am as a person. If you either going to like me, and you're going to feel me or more than likely you're not going to like me because you already see that you're like whatever it is you're trying to do. I am who you're going to have to get through to be able to do it. And that's just how I feel. So um, off the rip, I think the majority of the class didn't like me. All right. Go figure. Um, the first week. All right. We did it virtually. So we had to get on our computers and we had to get on like teams and we would the cameras are up and we would we, we had like certain uh, chapters and regulations that we had to read and we would talk about it the next day. So I believe the day is uh, we were as a class, we were talking about this particular ADP or whatever the case was. And he asked about a certain definition for something. He asked about a certain definition for something. And um, everybody was giving their opinion on it, but it wasn't a fact. Like it wasn't even true. Like he was like, um, what is the commander's? Uh, it was something I can't remember. And everybody was wrong. So after everybody said what they said, I rose my hand and he let me talk. And I said, um, honestly, uh, no disrespect, but based on the regulation, this is the, the, the term. This is what this means. So everybody's wrong. You know, this is pretty much what it means. So after I did that, you could just feel the energy. I guess everybody's like, oh, we got a little know-it-all here or whatever before we got there. So instantly when I did it, I thought to myself, like, dang, I probably just made everybody think that I think that, oh, I'm a know-it-all, or I'm, a, I'm, I'm that guy that's trying to make people look bad. But ultimately, the way I see it is I think it's a way to make you better. Like, I, wanna, I want to be around a circle of people who have similar uh, thought processes and mind frame, similar mind frame as me. I want people to correct me and be like, no, that's not what the regulation says. It is this. I want that type of, of, of input because then it's going to make me better. It's going to make me want to get on my stuff so I can be better. So after that particular thing, I think I was already branded before class even started. Um, I didn't have any issues with anybody in the class. Um, I pretty much it was I was cool in regards to I had no issues with nobody in the class. And I didn't feel like there were issues with anybody except for that one individual. But I did. As we started going forth in class, I, I just started feeling the energy shift on certain individuals. 
And I also noticed that whenever I had my viewpoint on certain things, that a lot of people just didn't want to agree with me, even though they agreed with me, if that makes sense. And how, why am I saying this? Because the next week, somebody would say the same exact thing that I said the week prior. And now everybody is agreeing with this person because it's a popularity contest. But when I said it, nobody. So we had a, uh, we had a group chat. We had a group chat. And I remember the first weekend um, after school, the first weekend being out of like done with school for that week, um, we're all like I'm asleep and somebody knocked on my hotel um, door and it was one of the people from my class. He was like, I just got to do a welfare check because, you know, we it was uh, something happened and the SGL needed to get to find out if everybody was OK. So I woke up. I looked at my phone and I seen all these missed calls. I looked in a group message and it's showing all these group messages that I missed. And um, it showed the SGL saying that I need a quick update. I need to know um, everybody's status. So there were other people who nobody could reach still and they were asleep. We went, we, we was up from four in the morning all the way until, you know, the evening, Monday through Friday. And at this point, everybody's exhausted. And we didn't know that we had to do that. So after everybody finally got, um, uh, you know, connected with, and we were able to verify that everybody was okay. I literally was like, okay, so this doesn't happen again. We should do a, like, we should just do a roll call every day on a weekend at a certain time. Nobody said nothing. I think like two people thumbs up, thumbed up my, um, my comment the next weekend, the same thing happened again. And then after that, somebody else brought that up and everybody clicked like on a, on a person's comment. Like, yeah, I agree. We should start doing a roll call. Like stuff like that, you know, um, it's like people just and then um, and I know I know this to be true because when I um, in all actuality, uh, me not getting the support of the majority of the class helped me. It helped the uh, SGL be able to see me amongst everybody else. And I remember him telling me when I sat down with him, he said, I see what's going on. He was like, you're one of the uh, you're, he was like, you're, you're one. I see your leadership. I see how you are as a person. And he was like, um, I see what's going on. He was like, I see how the class is turning it back on you because of who you are as a person, like how you are as a person. And I see that like they're, they're, it's like they're, they're collectively trying to stop things from coming to fruition. But he was like, I just want to let you know that you made the calm down. So that you good. He was like, just stay out of trouble. So I'm like, that's what's up. And I didn't think about that until he told me that. So after he told me that, then I started thinking like, dang, like as we was going through this whole class, there was a lot of ideas that I brought forth or things that I said that collectively was a class they wasn't supporting. And I remember I went for a first sergeant in which nobody else um, volunteered to do it. I think two other people. And then uh, I, but on the day that he was like, all right, who wants to do the first sergeant? I was the only one that rose my hand. So. He was like, do you have the script? And I was like, um, it's in my um, in my bag in the class. We was outside. So I ran up to the class. And as I ran up to the class, I heard like the class, like, hey, you should try to do it. You should try to do it. Telling other people to try. So when I come back down from the thing, now you got three, four people trying to go for it. So we're doing the um, we're rehearsing it to compete. I am the loudest one. I've had I had about four or five, six people come to me and tell me like you, you was the loudest. Like you, you have a commanding voice like you got it. All right. We get back to the class to do the vote. Um, there was no votes. I think I probably got like eight. But it is what it is. Like, like I said, it was like collectively people was just trying to stop things from coming to fruition. But what God has for you is for you. And it ended up working out for me because it literally just showed that people uh, collectively people just felt like I was so much of a threat that instead of supporting the leadership, they tried to go against it and it just made me stand out even more. So ultimately that was my experience. Um, I got the commandant's list again. Okay. And um, even though I didn't really get to network in which nobody did, nobody shared GCSS or anything that we learned about the, um, uh, uh, what we knew about the MOS for the most part. Except one dude. There's one dude, and I'm going to give him his credit. I'm not going to say his name. There was one dude who was very instrumental in the success of the class as a whole. And I'm, I'm going to, if you watch this video, I will, I'm going to salute and um, I'm saluting you, man, because you was very instrumental in a lot of things that we did in this classroom. I will give you your flowers. Um, the people who beat me out, one of them was an acting first sergeant. 
So I'm not even mad. I'm not mad about my position. I, I'm, I'm highly pleased. Um, I didn't expect it. And um, it just further reinforced my beliefs. In, and I'm going to continue to do what I do and, and, and be who I am as an individual. I don't care what school. I don't care um, what unit I go to. I'm not I'm not going to put on a facade and be something that I know that I'm not to try to be accepted by other individuals. And if that requires me being by myself, then so be it. As long as my my wife, my family and the people that I care about, my friends are there. I'm all good. So anyway, video is kind of long. I just want to share with y'all um, my experience in SLC and hopefully give you some insight for those who are going to be going to any school, whether it's BLC, um, ALC, SLC, or even so forth and so forth. All right. Be who you are. Do not go to that school trying to put on a facade. Don't go to that school trying to click up. Be who you are. Separate yourself from your peers. OK. And everything else will fall into place. OK. When you are on your stuff, there are going to be pe you're going to notice it. There are going to be people who don't like you and they don't know anything about you. You've never done anything to them. And you could just tell that these people that's how you know you on your stuff. You 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 might not be on your stuff. If everybody like you. You know what I'm saying? If everybody's like, yeah, it is, something might be up. OK, but um, that's pretty much it. Um, 2023, I hope all of y'all have a successful um, uh, new year. Whatever it is that you are aspiring to do, I hope that you're able to do it. OK, um, move forth. Don't look back. All right, 2023, I'm going to a new duty station. And um, my goal is to continue to make videos. I initially did this channel. Um, because I was on this recruiting assignment and I wanted to be able to uh, interact with other people from using a social media platform so that if I ever reached out to you about being, you know, interested in the military, you have references that you can go off of to get to know me for me. But now that my time is ended with USAREC and I am done with recruiting, I'm out of here. Um, I think I'm going to keep this channel going and, um, and share my experience as I go through the military, I still got another 10 years, a little bit over 10 years left before I can retire. And I think I'm going to keep this channel going. So um, much love for um, everybody who's still watching my videos. And um, I hope to be able to um, increase the channel and I hope to continue to uh, bring you content. All right. Um, that's it, man. All right. Peace.